know what you're going to say. I know what you're thinking. Yep. We've got a new room. It's a uh, pretty significant and impressive change over the last space we were using for these videos. If you guys like it, please let me know. Leave in the comments down below. We may do a video on this in the future. Maybe a room tour. If you guys want to see that as well, let me know down below. But this video is not about the new room. It's actually about something completely different. It's about YouTube thumbnails. I've had a lot of people come into my stream from my YouTube channel and ask different questions about the thumbnails that I make for my YouTube videos as well as the process for actually making them. How I create different kinds of elements inside of the thumbnails, what software I use to make them, all of the different tips, tricks and techniques that I use that go into making thumbnails. So I decided to go into some more detail and show off five different tips and tricks that I use when it comes to making YouTube thumbnails. Just a quick reminder before we jump in, I do stream every single Tuesday and Thursday over on Twitch. The link to my channel is in the description down below. If you have any questions about what I mentioned in this video or want to have a direct conversation with me one on one, then uh, that's the place to do that. Making a YouTube thumbnail is a very exciting part of the entire video making process. It's pretty essential to find that right balance of a good, clickable thumbnail and a really catchy title that will get people to watch your videos. I did a video a few months ago with Harris where we broke down the different kinds of thumbnails we have on the Alpha Gaming channel. We also talked about finding that balance of having a clickable thumbnail and that catchy title and how they are cohesive and how they work together as a team. If you want to see that video, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below or up here. Or is it this corner? I think it's this corner up here. That video broke down some of the techniques that I use when it comes to making thumbnails and showed how I make them pop and stand out. But in this video, I thought I'd break down those techniques and show you guys how you can start using them to make your own YouTube thumbnails. So let's start off with our first design trick, and that is 3D text. So here I am inside of Affinity Design, and I have up an old thumbnail I did for my YouTube editing tips video where I showed you guys how I edit the Alpha Gaming YouTube videos. And as you can see, we have this 3D text style here where the text has got a bit of an extrusion to it, as well as the YouTube logo along with it. And I do this very simply, and it's very easy to replicate inside of Affinity Designer. The first thing you're gonna do is obviously create a new artboard or use the artboard you're using for your thumbnail. And I'm gonna create a text layer. And I call this one YouTube. And the easiest way of creating 3D text inside of Affinity Designer is by duplicating the text over and over again. You see, Affinity Designer has a really cool smart duplicate feature. I don't exactly know the correct name for it, but let me show you what I mean. So if I were to create a line like that, and then I offset the anchor point of this line by clicking up here and changing the Enable Transform Origin box. I have this little uh, origin point right here, this little anchor point right here. If I drag this down and say I want the anchor point, the center of this object to be right there. If I duplicate this and then hold the Shift key and then move the Rotate around and then duplicate again by pressing Command or Control J on the keyboard, you can see it will inherit the rotation and keep it going forward so you can create some really cool shapes and really cool designs and that's going to be the basis for our 3d text inside of affinity designer so i'm going to get rid of all that and show you how it works with the text itself and i'm going to zoom in just actually a little bit before that and i'm going to hold down the option key and i'm going to drag the text out just a little bit fraction of a centimeter fraction of a pixel out and then i'm going to press command j or Control j repeatedly like so as many times as you want uh, depends on how thick you want the text and as you can see now you have loads of independent text copies that have become useful in just a little bit the first thing we need to do though is go down to the very bottom of the layers panel and then bring up the top layer back to the top because what it's done is stacked the layers on top of each other like so and it's uh, pushed our initial top layer right down to the very bottom so by clicking the bottom layer shift control or shift command and then the right square bracket will bring up the entire layer right to the very top you can click and drag as well but i find those keyboard shortcuts are much quicker and a lot easier to remember and much less fiddly as well we then want to select the layer underneath it scroll down hold down the shift key and then select all the other text layers what i like to do from here on in is actually like to group the text so command or control g to group the text and then very simply i'm going to select the group and i'm going to bring this lightness slider all the way down to zero and if we zoom out you'll notice that we have 3d text the 3d emulated text that looks really really clean and really really simple and then what i did was actually select the top layer and the group again and then group these two together by pressing command or control g and then press the effects button down here and then give it an outline and then change the color to white and that is very simply 
how you create the 3D text effect for my thumbnails inside of Affinity Designer. Moving on, the next technique we're going to be talking about is actually creating depth within your thumbnails. Now, there's several different ways that you can go about creating depth in your thumbnails, but we're going to break down a couple of them for you right now. So I'm inside of Affinity Photo, and the first thing I like to do is separate Harris from the background to be able to create that layer of separation. So the first thing I like to do is click on the background layer, the layer that I'm going to be working with. And then what I've got to do is go to the layer and then click on duplicate, or you can press command J to also duplicate it as well, or command or control J. And then what that will do is it'll create a copy for us that we are going to be working with. The first thing I like to do is actually separate Harris from the background by clicking over here and selecting the selection tool or the, the magic wand from uh, Photoshop, the selection brush tool. And then what I like to do is just go over and highlight Harris. And what you select in server affinity is what you want to keep. So I'm selecting Harris. I want to keep him. We're going to go over and click on the refine tool. And then what we can do is actually increase the border width just a little bit for the map. And then down here, we have a adjustment brush. We have a matte adjustment brush. If we click on that and increase the size of the brushes a little bit, we can actually go over his head. If you use the square brackets, by the way, as well, you can actually uh, decrease and increase the size. And then if I just click and drag and move over the hair, like so, what it will do is it will actually matte his hair in a bit more of a refined way and then what i do is i'm going to click apply and then i'm going to click on this little button here which is the mask button right here the mask layer once i've done that I've actually created a mask layer for us on our background layer so if i turn off the background behind it you can actually see here we now have harris cut out completely and then we still have a background layer with harris on top and then what i'd like to do from here is actually send this to affinity designer and i do that easily by clicking the file menu and then clicking edit in designer and then from here what i'd like to do is actually create just a massive rectangle so I click on the rectangle tool and then i'm going to click and drag and just drag over the entire canvas it doesn't matter if it's centered or not just make sure it's big enough to cover the entire canvas and then we're going to send this layer behind our background layer like so you may see as well we actually have some uh, little masking things here we might need to fix we can do that back inside of affinity photo in just a little bit next i'm going to click on the rectangle layer then i'm going to go over to the gradient tool or by pressing g on the keyboard you can also get this as well the gradient fill tool and then by zooming out just a little bit what I do is I click and drag and I create a gradient going across the screen. And by selecting these little color pucks here, you can adjust the colors of the gradients by selecting them, going over to the color wheels and the color sliders over here, and then just increasing the colors and just tweaking what they look like. And then what I like to do is actually give it an overlay blend mode or some kind of blend mode that helps separate it from the background. So I can overlay. And what might help sometimes on occasion is by selecting the background layer, going down to the adjustments button over here then clicking on that and then going up to hsl and just bringing the saturation of that layer down and you can tweak these colors to your heart's content until you are very happy with them and the last little thing we need to do now is actually just fix up the mask just a little bit as we mentioned earlier you notice that the mask just picked up a little bit of the background when we adjusted the mat on the hair it picked up some of the background so what we're going to do is go ahead and fix that by going back up to the file menu and then clicking edit in photo and just like that we're back inside of affinity photo where we can adjust this mask layer and we do that by clicking this little drop down arrow here and then selecting the mask layer then going over and clicking on the brush tool what you need to do for this though is actually make sure that your colors in your color palette right here these two pucks the foreground is a white color and the background is a black color is that becoming handy very very shortly with the brush tool highlighted if you hover over the actual canvas you can kind of see through into what the layer was behind it if you press x on your keyboard it actually flips these colors around so the black will take away elements from the mask and white will actually add elements back in so for this i'm going to zoom in just a little bit and then using the bracket keys just bring the brush size down just a little bit and then just kind of just go over this little, this little bit of hair here and just kind of tidy up the corners just a little bit that is how you create a gradient overlay background inside of affinity photo and inside of affinity designer and what i'd like to do is actually use outer glows an awful lot when it comes to uh thumbnails and it helps create that divide and that separation a lot so for this example i'm going to click on harris because i want to give him an outer glow and actually rasterize this layer to be just harris so i'm going to right click and choose rasterize and trim and what that will do is actually kind of cut everything else out and uh, give me what i need with harris in the middle of the canvas and then what i'd like to do is select the effects button right here and then i go to the outer glow properties make sure it's ticked and then i increase the radius like so and you can play around with the intensity you can actually go, go beyond the sliders or by uh, typing in a number here something like 200 and to kind of add to this what i like to do is actually add an inner glow as well and increase the radius just a little bit and give it like almost like a, a fake hair light or a fake kind of edge light around him 
and then tweak the opacity just a little bit other times i've actually used drop shadows and use outer shadows to create that layer of separation so by clicking on the outer shadow you can add a bit of a drop shadow to the entire object tweak the offset the intensity and the opacity just a little bit it's quite subtle but when you zoom out a little bit it just creates that layer of depth that tricks the eye to thinking there's a lot more going on in the background one other thing i like to do when it comes to creating separation inside of my uh, thumbnails is i like to use elements and one element that i've used a lot is actually a cog wheel which you might be quite surprised to hear but let me show you how this works i want to go back to affinity designer by clicking file edit in designer and then what i'm going to do is actually click on the little cog wheel here if you can't see the cog wheel click and hold on the affinity designer custom shapes here and then scroll down until you find the cog wheel shape and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to click in the middle of the canvas hold down the shift key and then the command or control keys and then scale it up and then i'm going to grab these little smart object controls right here bring these down the inner radius and the outer radius and then you might kind of see what's happening here what i'm trying to do is create a sun ray style effect and right now that would be pretty decent if you're looking to create some kind of really abstract looking thumbnail but i like to give it some feathering and fade the edges out as if it's like it's a beam of light so the easy way of doing that is by going over to this icon right here in the toolbar in affinity designer it's called the transparency tool you can also get to it by pressing y on the keyboard and then all you need to do is then click and drag from the center out you may notice though it's only doing one side of the object and that's because we are using a linear fade style if you change that from linear to radial in the top left hand corner you'll see a type drop down menu here change it to radial what you'll notice is you actually have a circle radius like so you can tweak the position and then adjust how much that fade happens and then when you combine that with the outer glow that we did earlier you'll notice we have a pretty cool little effect that is again separates areas from the background and creates a very good eye-catching part of the thumbnail that will attract a viewer's attention obviously there's many more things you can do to create separation and depth within a thumbnail i'm showing you a few of these right now but feel free to experiment and play around with these style of techniques or find some on your own and uh, see what works best for you the next trick is a pretty small one but it's actually pretty important and not many people actually know how to do it inside of affinity designer uh, and that's arrows as you can see on this thumbnail from an old alpha gaming video i created these little arrows here to create some uh, points of interest to kind of highlight the different objects inside of the thumbnail they're really really clean really really simple but they add a bit of a organicness to it they add a bit of life to the thumbnail it makes it a bit more interesting a bit more eye-catching so i'm going to create a new artboard real quick and show you guys how i did it there are two different tools that you can use to create arrows inside of affinity designer you can use the pen tool or you can use the pencil tool i'll show you how you can do arrows in both of those very shortly we'll start off with the pen tool so what i do is actually start off by making a line i'm going to click and start a point and then i'm going to put the point up here at a bit of an angle you create this straight line if you click and select the line and then drag it out you'll notice that we are creating curve handles these little bezier handles on this little uh, line here and it creates a much more even much more natural curve and then from there it's all about sizing and styling from here so what i like to do is click on the stroke properties right here or the outline properties increase the width just a little bit make it a bit of a thicker line and then right down here you'll see the start and end points we're gonna look at the end point for now but you can use the start point if you want to use the opposite direction if you click on this you'll see a bunch of options and loads of arrows appear for you to pick what i like to do is actually set this one triangle point right here and then what i like to do is actually like do a bit of a taper and uh, i do that by clicking on the strip properties again and then going into the pressure right here and then by holding down the alt or the option key select one of these points and then you can click and drag and move it down and as you notice it thins out the bottom of that line and then what i sometimes like to do is if i like if it's too long or too much of a curve all i do is i like to click and make a point halfway through the line and then use that as my end point and then delete the original end point i find it's much more of a natural looking arrow if it's a bit shorter on the tail looks more like a comet in that sense and then you can play around with the size of the width again and if you want to tweak the size of the width but not increase the size of the arrowhead you can do that by going down to the size properties right here for the end and you can tweak the size of the arrowhead down just a little bit and then if you want to scale it up and make it bigger make sure you tick scale with objects and what that will do is that will proportionally scale the width and the size of the arrowhead proportionally with the arrow so you can do is then select it by pressing v on the keyboard and then holding down control or command and then the shift key 
you can increase the size if you want to go for more of this style here where the arrow is curving and then pointing to something i like to use the pencil tool for that i select the pencil tool and what i like to do is actually put the stabilizer on and make sure it's ticked to a uh, rope mode with a length of 35 make sure use fill is unticked and then i just draw the line that i'm after play around with these points and neaten them up and tidy them up just a little bit make sure they look uh the way i want them to look and then for these i don't like to use the pressure so i'm going to click on the stroke options under pressure uh, i'm going to click reset on that increase the width just a little bit and as you can see our arrowhead is actually already enabled because we already did this one right here and then i'm going to increase the size of the arrowhead and the way i get the dotted lines or the, or the dashes is by clicking on the stroke properties and then right at the top here on the style you can click dash line style and then you can play around with the dash spacing by saying like three 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 that will increase the spacing play around with the sizing like so and then you have another little line a little style of arrow that you can use inside of your thumbnails another text tip here and this one is mainly because a lot of people have been asking how i do this kind of style for a very long time and i'm not sure the name for this kind of technique but uh this is what it looks like on the thumbnail it's a very clean knockout style of text that as the subject is in front of the text it knocks out the fill and leaves the outline behind but this one is actually pretty simple and pretty easy what we're going to do is create a text layer inside of affinity design i'm going to use the example i used earlier with harris already cut out and uh, i'm going to remove the outer glow in this example and then what i'm going to do is going to create a text layer by setting the text get it stylized and position where you want it to be in front of your subject and the next thing we're going to do is create an outline for this text and we do that by pressing a on the keyboard going up to the stroke properties right here and then increasing the width just a little bit make sure it's the same color so you should have something like this pure white text the next thing you need to do is very very simple command or control j on the keyboard to duplicate move one of the copies of the text layers underneath your subject then on the top layer copy all you need to do is go over to the fill right here and then click on this little button right here which clears that fill boom there you go now you've just created the knockout style of text that I've used in several different thumbnails on my channel and on the Alpha Gaming channel. And this next one is something more of a practice rather than a technique that I uh, want to share with you guys. Keeping things simple is the best thing you can do for your thumbnails. Sure, it's important to grab the viewer's attention and get those clicks, but uh, you can overdo it and you can make a thumbnail bad by taking it too far. Some of the most popular videos on mine and on the Alpha Gaming YouTube channel are very simple and not complex at all. For this one, I'm actually gonna be using Affinity Photo. And the first thing I like to do with an image like this is actually adjust the color and increase some of the contrast. So what I do with that is I go down to the adjustment layers right here, click on that and then select a curves adjustment. And then I go in and just add an S curve to this layer like so. So I give Harris a bit of a brighten, a bit of a touch up and then decrease the contrast. And as you can see, already look at what kind of look that's given to the thumbnail it's really made harris pop from the background it's increased the background vibrancy and it makes it just pop a lot more this is probably all i would do on the color front the next thing i like to do is add some sharpening to this because of how small thumbnails usually get i like to increase the clarity and increase the sharpness so they pop a lot more on that smaller scale and that smaller resolution and i do that by going over and adding a high pass filter if you click on this little live filters button it looks like an hourglass icon right down here if you click on that scroll down and find high pass filter it will then make the canvas gray and the easiest way i can explain what's happening here is it's kind of like creating a depth map for your image and increasing the radius you can see it's actually finding all of the edges of our image and then sharpening them up and increasing the intensity of the clarity and change the blend mode to overlay and if i turn it off and on again you can kind of see it does affect some of the sharpness it increases the color of the shadows around his eyes and it really makes it pop if i scale this down and toggle it you can see how much of a more of a pop it gives another good way to create focus on a thumbnail is by using vignettes which basically darkens the edges of the screen to create a highlighted focus in the middle and there's another live filter for that inside of this hourglass icon here in the live filters and it is very simply called a vignette by taking down the exposure you can see what it's doing here is it's darkening the edges of the thumbnail you can then decrease the scale and then decrease the exposure a bit more again very simple very nice image that would look good 
with a really unique title with a really simple title that cl gets clicks along with all of these tips guys remember it's important to have the right title and the right thumbnail that best suit the content that you are putting out watch that video that i mentioned with harris and myself where we talked about that combo and then use these techniques to help improve your future thumbnails and if you have any questions you want to talk about this even more i do stream every single tuesday and thursday over on twitch the link to my channel is in the description down below and if you want to get some insight from the larger community and make some friends and share the kind of stuff you're doing Doing, then feel free to join the discord the link for that is also in the description down below and once again thank you so much for watching and until next time take care dude crabs sing fish are flying <laughs> that's a great one do crabs sing fish are flying oh, i got a kick out of it that was amazing that was awesome holy crab Oh.